switching gears here a bit. This is over to Animal Kingdom. Stay seated. We can't go, okay? Uh, so this is quite a bit of time after Great was Magic Kingdom. We left there at Ford Rain. Uh, we got to Magic Kingdom, and this is the African Safari. And she just told us to sit down and shut up. Um, this is really cool. It was like a drive-through zoo. Unfortunately, not a petting zoo, but still very cool. I'm not going to talk much because our guide was awesome. He knew a lot of things, and just listen to him. He's going to crack an egg of knowledge all over your face. Oh, is this the hombre that, uh, man, what was the story there? The gorilla that got loose and they shot him? Something like that. I'm not sure, but if so, a uh, very well-deserved memorial. Finally, a longer segment here. Uh, although, first time through, I don't know what we're going to see. Those chains on the ground, you see those chains that we just drove over? I don't know what those are for. Maybe uh, keeping the tires out of the mud? I'm not sure. Over here to the right, back behind the bamboo there, you might see an okapi. A lot of people think the okapi are related to the zebra because of those stripes along their legs. They're actually closely related to the giraffe because they have a long prehensile tongue. Prehensile just means it's going to act like a finger and help them grab things. We actually did not know the okapi existed until 1901. Before that, we just thought they were a myth. So this actually only makes about 120 years of us even knowing they exist. That large black and white bird to the right, that's a saddle belt storm. They get their name from that yellow patch on their bill that kind of looks like a saddle. Holy grown, they'll stand about five feet tall and have a wingspan. One of the best ways we can help the animals that live here in the forest, we can recycle our paper. It's going to help save a lot of these trees and in return, help protect these animals' natural habitat. Did you hear all that? I told you, he's, he's smart. He knows what he's doing. I'm, uh, I'm going to shut up most of the time and just let you listen to the guide. All right, so coming up over here to the left, you start to see some of these kind of orange animals. There's one across the road here. This, these are the bongos. Bongos are known as the ghosts of the forest because they're so rarely seen. Both the males and the females will have those curved back horns, and that's going to help them navigate through the thick brush of the forest without becoming tangled up in it. Just like that. Oh, wow. <laughs> Alright, so we are going to be leaving <laughs> the military forest and next up, the Sahi River area. The Sahi River is a fantastic place to see a lot of the animals that like to hang out around the water. Now because these animals do hang out around the water, sometimes they can be a little bit tougher to see. So no worries if you can't see the animals right away. Go ahead and stay seated for me and we'll try to get a better view as we I can't remember if we saw the animals. <laughs> Like to the right, you might get a quick view of a couple of hippopotamus. Oh, yeah. Like I said, go ahead, stay seated. Definitely saw the hippopotamus. Hippos yeah. can be a little bit tougher to see, mostly because they can hold their breath underwater for around eight minutes. And they're not really that great at swimming, so they do more or less like to walk and fly along the very bottom of the water. So if you do see something in the water that looks like a big rock moving around, more than likely that is a hippopotamus. Now, hippos have their ears, eyes, and nose all on the top of their heads. That's going to help them come up for air without having to be completely unsubmerged. When the hippopotamus is born, they are between 50 to 100 pounds, and they'll grow to be well over 4,000 pounds, so definitely quite the transformation. <laughs> a group of hippopotamus is also known as a bloot. They can actually have teeth that can reach 18 inches long, which is helpful to ward off predators. Over hippos are vegetarian. Uh, you'll see one as we stay seated. You'll see one walking towards the water over here to the left. Friends, I just said stay seated. Let's sit in the back. Friends, let's sit down. Sit down. Shut up. <laughs> I thought we said, yeah, there they are. Okay, I thought I remember seeing one. Took a while. <laughs> you uh. John, you uh, you do plan to have okay, so dinosaurs on your dinosaur tour, you know? Nile crocodiles are about as long as a giraffe is tall. It's about 18 to 20 feet. The main of the some of them might have their mouths 
episodes, and that's because they are full-blooded reptiles. So they're actually going to keep that mouth open to help regulate their internal body temperature. Now, mild crocodiles are about as long as giraffe is tall. We just talked about that, but they're actually opportunistic hunters. Opportunistic hunters, which means they're going to be... Also known as the upside down tree because it looks like its roots are on the outside. It is going to be leafless for about nine months out of the year, but it is excellent at storage water, which is how it gets its other nickname from the fish. As we head down onto the savannah, one of the ways it gets its unique landscape, the elephants come through and help to plow down the trees. The remaining trees that you rest up keep nice and pruned by eating the leaves. And then the antelope and the zebra help to keep the lawn mowed by eating the grass. So everyone works together out here. We're slowing down across the savannah up ahead. There's a couple of giraffes uh, in and out of the roads. So kind of slowing down for them. Uh, a lot of the animals are still kind of spread out from when it was raining earlier. So uh, we'll talk about each animal a little bit more as we get closer to them. But if you want to know what an animal is, those are Ancoli cattle also known as Watusi cattle from the tribe that first domesticated them. Now those horns are going to be about three to four feet on each side and inside those horns is a honeycomb-like structure that's going to act as a way to help keep the Ancoli cattle nice and cool. Now the cows will weigh anywhere between 900 to 1200 pounds and the bulls will weigh anywhere between 1000 to 1600 pounds. So they are very, very heavy. <laughs> See, there's another bird with its wings spread. <laughs> what is he doing? Drying out. It did just rain. He might be drying out. I think that's a vulture. Maybe. What you see coming up here to the left, those are the wildebeest. Wildebeest get their name from the Afrikaans word meaning wild beasts. They are the second most densely populated animal in the world. Second only to humans. In fact, every year about 1.5 million wildebeest will take part in the Great Migration, migrating in Europe between 500 to 1,000 miles. You also might notice the large termite mounds on both sides of the trunk. These are made from gum, dirt, and saliva. They'll actually bake out here in the hot sand of the savannah and become as hard as concrete. And it's just like they use them as a scratching post. The giraffes, the other smaller animals like the antelope and the zebra. Woo! Check out them horns! They have a flap of skin underneath their neck called a dewlap. That's actually going to help regulate their internal body temperature. Another zebra is going to have that. The zebra is also known as a dazzle. When it just past the zebra, it's way over there along that path. You'll see some of those smaller antelope. Those are the springbok. They actually get their name because they can spring six feet in the air and 13 feet across. They are one of the top 10 fastest land animals and can run between 55 and 60 miles an hour. In fact, with the running start, the springbok could actually jump over this truck if they wanted to. But don't worry, they don't want to. Go back to the zebras for just a second. A lot of people want to know whether zebras are black with white stripes or white with black stripes. You can tell by looking at their nose. If their nose is black, they're black with white stripes. If their nose is white, they're white with black stripes. If we start to turn the corner, we'll start to see a few of those Maasai giraffes going out. <laughs> the girls in Maasai Giraffe will stand about 18 to 20 feet tall. They have an 18 inch long prehensile tongue that will help them grab that vegetation that is high up in the trees. Which is good because they're going to eat for about 19 hours out of the day. And <laughs> as we pass by the giraffes, go ahead and take a look at their spot pattern. It's as unique to them as a human's fingerprint. No two giraffes are going to have the same spot pattern. These two really large antelope coming up, uh, looks like probably going to be, so it's walking across, so both of them are going to be on the left hand side. These are the eland. Eland are the largest antelope, going to weigh about 2,000 pounds fully grown. Both the males and the females will have those curved back horns, and just like those bongos we saw earlier, That'll help them navigate through thick brush and tall grass without becoming tangled up in it. 
As we uh, continue to pass by this group of giraffes over here, group of giraffes also known as the tower, they actually have as many vertebrae in their neck as humans do in their entire body. A heart the size of a basketball. So I have one of the highest blood pressures of any animal as well. Like we said, they eat for 19 hours out of the day, so most of the time they see the heart. I think Paul Bunyan walked by, pulled this tree out of the ground, flipped it around and jammed it right back in the ground upside down. Ooh, look at that mud. We were uh, caught in between monsoons at the moment. Uh, we got dumped on later. Unfortunately, I don't have footage of that, but doing some mudslinging in the Magic Kingdom tour bus. Greater flamingos. Flamingos get that pink coloration from their diet of shrimp, which is rich in beta carotene. They're going to stand about five feet tall, and they are the largest of all the flamingos. Otherwise, they'll stay cool in the hot sun of the savanna. They'll stand on one leg. This helps to increase their blood circulation, and in return, helps keep them nice. Their legs bend the wrong way. <laughs> Here's something that might look a little bit gray. It's because they won't reach that full peak coloration until they're about two years old. Look over there to the left. You see an African elephant back behind that tree there. Oh, I totally missed the elephant. What a terrible time to pan right. Unbelievable. Their ears. Their ears are large. The way I like to remember it is they kind of look like the shape of the They're going to kind of hide that. Are those tusks? Is Disney getting into the ivory game? So since it's just the one, the ostrich are the largest flightless bird. They can run at an average speed of about 40. Squint really hard. You can see them. Large wings to help them steer whenever they're running. They can run at an average speed of about 60 miles an hour. However, they can only maintain that speed for a couple hundred yards. They tend to get tired, and that's why they're animals. Got a big castle coming in and steal their prey. And that's you to just walk back into the trees over here. Uh, next year is really tough to see. The only other one I can see right now. So you look really close back behind these bushes here. Uh, and that tree, I'll just walk back out again. Uh, now, she does have those black spots all over their body. When those black spots are next to their eyes, it's going to act as a way to help deflect the sun. Similar to how a football player or a baseball player wear that black chalk. Day, they're going to save most of that energy for nightfall, so they will be most of their hunting. In the daytime, the eyesight is up. But at night, it's going to be about five. Is there a Lion King record? Oh, they're laying on top of the rocks, I think. Got to squint again. Most of the hunting. Uh, this uh, lone animal up here closer to us. This is the Bontabok. At one point, there are only 15 left in the entire world. So the local farmer came through, put up a fence around the remaining population, and slowly over the years, those serves like this are still one of the few places you can see. Yeah, there are some elephants. No! Those are rhinoceroses. I didn't squint hard enough. <laughs> First time I've ever heard of lion. And then coming up over here, the yeah. lions, you can start seeing these kind of gray animals. These are the water buff. As the name might suggest, they're often found near water, and that's because they drink a lot of it. So they can identify each other by smelly secretions all over their body. Let's get their name for the afternoon. <laughs> 
Two are guided about a crack and ostrich egg of knowledge all over your face. Listen to these facts. Use those large wings to help them steer whenever they're running. These are the ostrich eggs here closer to us. Those eggs are very large, rich in calcium. They about three pounds each. A human could stand on those eggs and they would not break. In fact, you can fit about three dozen chicken eggs in one ostrich egg. So farmers in this area will use that as another source of income and to help reduce the dependence on other animals. And the yellow box out front, that's a beehive fence, like the ones we talked about earlier with the elephants and the bees. Whoa, is that a planned water feature? I think that's just draining rainwater. <laughs> We're going to be approaching the unload dock here shortly. Now is a good time to go ahead and start taking a look around your rows. Make sure you have all those loose items like hats.